Well, hey, welcome everybody. Uh, Jake here. Uh, I'm not sure who any of us would have met before, but just to introduce myself, my name is Jake and I'm from based at Hillsong Church UK, based here in London and really part of the youth and young adults team there, um, which we'll get a little bit more into. So if you're there, just feel free to say hi in the chat. Where you're tuning in from would be cool to find out. I'm in East London, Stratford. Um, maybe even let us know what you're drinking. I've got my uh, my little coffee of choice here. But um, yeah, thank you for being part of this. Thank you for joining. There is opportunity for questions throughout this whole thing. So if you've got a question, type it in the chat or the Q&A area. Let me know. And then we'll definitely go through those at the end. But as I was saying, just to really get straight into it, I just want to talk about kind of some things I've learned recently, and especially over the last year, I've kind of gone from what was leading just youth, young adults, and the stuff we do in schools as a church, outreach into schools work, to then really taking on what we call nice coffee fueling the morning, now into the afternoon, Anthony, so welcome, Croydon, representing. And um, really, what I've gone into more recently is what's called YX Way Artistic, kind of started to lead that, which is everything we do, creative and worship, comms, TV, worship and platform, and with so much now being online, this is the digital and social stream that I've learned so much that kind of these lessons I want to share with you as I'm learning on the job at the same time. So just to really get into it, and I don't know about you, but I feel like for me, back in 2020, I watched TV a lot more than ever before. I was at home a lot more. I had more time on my hands. So from Netflix to Amazon Prime to Apple TV to Now TV, from Modern Family to How to Get Away with Murder to uh, this is us. If you've seen this is us, I cry like every single episode. It's great, but it, it it's real. It makes you cry every single time. But then I've also gone into more like mainstream TV shows like I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, Strictly Come Dancing, all that Saturday night stuff. Me and my wife here, we just we love it. And I remember watching one of the I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here episodes, and after the episode, it went to ITV News, and uh, it was around the time they were talking about these high street stores that were closed, and I think Debenhams was amongst that, Topshop, Topman. And I remember one thing the reporter said, he was, he said um, the business strategies of these companies, they were actually on the way to breaking down anyway, but lockdown just accelerated what was inevitable. Lockdown just accelerated what was inevitable. When you think about it, you can think about companies that one day they were there, one day they were gone, and really because their business strategies broke down. And because their business strategies broke down, it created space for other companies to actually rise up and fill in that gap. For example, we've gone from Nokia to Apple, we've gone from Blockbuster to Netflix, we've gone from CD to iTunes, and now more and more we're going from high street stores to online. You take Nokia, for example, Nokia, they were at one point the mobile phone to have. Snake was the game to play. But one day they were, they were there and what appeared, one day they were gone because maybe they reached a point of success and they didn't know how they got there. Or maybe they were unwilling to change or didn't really know how to change and adapt with the times. And all of a sudden, they dropped out of the mobile game. Then there's other companies like Lego. Lego is an opposite example. They have stood the test of time. See, I've played with Lego. I've been to Legoland. I've watched Lego. Like Lego has been there over time, over the generations. And it's because the employees at Lego, they realize they're not just in it to make it better while they're there, but they're in it to make sure that Lego lasts way beyond their lifetime, way beyond the time that they are with the company. Their goal is not just to reach the weekend, get to the end of the week. Their goal is not just to beat the last quarter, but their goal is to, in their words, to continue to create innovative play experiences and continue to reach more and more children every year. That is why they exist. That is what Lego's goal is to do. And then there's Disney. Disney are continuing to create films, so great film, watch it over Christmas, recreating films like Mulan and Lion King. And then they've just introduced Apple TV, and the founder, not the founder, sorry, that was Walt Disney, the current CEO of Disney, a guy called Bob Iger, he said this quote, he said, now more than ever, we need to innovate or die, and we cannot innovate if we operate out of fear of the new. And I read that quote, and it was in a book that I think he wrote last year, and to me, it was one of those quotes that stood out because it's so true, because I think for us, whatever we're in, whether we volunteer or work in digital and social, or however our involvement is in that. There's been so much change recently. And if we want to stay relevant, if we want to continue to reach people, we have to actually continue to innovate. And if we want to innovate, we cannot operate out of fear of the new. I don't know if you ever noticed on your laptop, you get that little notification on the top right corner. It says 
updates ready to install. And usually when you get a notification, you get two options. You can update now or update later. Update now, update later, try now, try later. But really 2020 didn't give us that update later option. We had no other option but to update now. And with that came its challenges, but also with that came its opportunities. There has yet definitely been successes and failures. There's definitely been wins and losses. There's definitely open doors and closed doors. But really what it came down to is that we had to decide that now we're going to be on the forefront of digital change rather than being undone by it. So if you want a title for this session that we're going to chat about for the next few minutes, I've called this session Ready to Update. Ready to Update. And there's a scripture I just want to share with you that I really love and kind of properly, I've read it before, skimmed over it, but really stood out to me recently and it says genesis 2 10 to 12 it says a river flowed from the land of eden water in the garden and then dividing into four branches the first branch called the fish on f- flowed around the entire land of Havilah, where the gold is found the gold of that land is exceptionally pure aromatic resin and onyx stone are also found there to me real random verse you could easily skim over it obviously talking about all the creation story but Verse 12 stood out to me recently because I saw it in a way that I've never saw it before, where it talks about gold and it talks about things like onyx. These things are raw materials. So it says to me that if God created stuff, but he still left raw materials, then it says that actually the creation process is not finished. It's not a finished product, but it is an ongoing process and one that we're all part of. So whatever it is that's ahead of us, we have to believe that God is going to give us the raw materials. He's going to give us whatever we need to continue to step into the new, to continue to create. So whatever it is for us, there might be challenges ahead, there might be so many unknowns, so many uncertainties. And yes, 2020 and lockdown and everything we're now doing online has created these new challenges. But really, going back to that example I said before, lockdown has probably just accelerated what was inevitable. So for me, I know there's been challenges and opportunities we've stepped into. And I just want to share, I've got six things, six keys that I want to share with you that really I've learned over this time and that have helped me to always be oh, sorry my laptop connects to my phone just started ringing halfway through but really these things have helped me as we've continued to wherever we can however we can always be ready to update so again welcome if you've joined more recently just say hi again in the chat where you're from would love to hear from you loads of time for questions at the end but to kick off first thing i want to chat about is start with why start with why as i said before i used to run what was the schools project i'm still involved with that and when we started schools project outreach into schools we came up with like a why statement if you've read simon Sinek's start with why he'll tell you that every why statement needs a what it exists for two and so that there's a two and there's a so that so schools project exists to reach young people so that we can uh, bring a message of innovation not innovation bring a message of hope and inspiration across the uk that's why Schools Project exists. And then when I stepped in this new role in 2020 of YXY Artistic, more specifically YXY Creative, I was like, why does YXY Creative exist? Why do we want to Why do we want to have this? What's the need for it right now? And really it came down to this. We said that YXY Creative exists. YXY meaning youth and young adults, just so that is clear. It exists so that we can bring innovation, we can bring direction, and we can bring vision to everything that we do creatively so that people can engage with church in a way that is fun, fresh, and relevant. In a way that is fun, fresh, and relevant. For me, I grew up in church and I've been in services that were kind of none of those things. They weren't fun, they weren't fresh, and they weren't relevant. I would spend my time at the back of the service playing with Pokemon cards, playing with football cards, doing my homework, anything but engaging with the service. But I've also been part of services that are those things, fun, fresh, and relevant. But then when stuff shifted to online, again, we had to figure out a way, okay, now we're the creative team, we're doing everything comms, everything TV. How do we now create that experience for people so they can continue to engage with church in a way that is those things fun, fresh, and relevant? And the goal is not just that they engage with the content. It's not content consumption, but actually the goal is connection. How can we use all these things as tools so that people can continue to be connected? I don't know if anyone uses the save button on Instagram. It's the little flag kind of looking thing underneath a post. I love the save thing. I save stuff all the time, usually for inspirational to use. But there's a key difference when you save stuff for inspiration or you see something, take a picture of a quote that you like. The key difference between imitation and emulation. See, imitation is when you 
say something, take something, and you're going to use that idea and pretty much copy exactly the same thing. We see this in fashion all the time. There'll be a runway show of all these latest trends, and then a few months later, all the high street stores have got stuff similar because they've just taken that idea, they've copied it, and now they're selling it. But really what we want to look at is emulation. Emulation is seeing that idea, taking it, but really taking it to the next level because you bring yourself to it. You make it relevant to you. You make it relevant to your organization. Make it relevant to your church. You see this with players like Michael Jordan and LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. All of them are seen as great players and all have their own playing styles. But I'm sure each one would have told you that they would have learned something from the player that had gone before. They might have even stolen a move from that player, but it wasn't just imitation, it was emulation because, yes, they might have taken that move, but they've taken it to the next level because they brought their game to it, they brought their playing style to it. Imitation versus emulation. And a lot of this thought comes from this, this author, this guy, he wrote a book called Steal Like an Artist. And I love it because in there, he kind of explains the difference between good theft and bad theft. I got a screenshot of one of the pages in the book here and good theft versus bad theft. Honor versus degrade, study versus skim, steal from many versus steal from one, credit versus plagiarize, transform versus imitate, remix versus rip off. I wonder for us, what if we were to be people that were only going to use the good theft side? Whatever inspiration we see, we're going to honor, study, steal from many, credit, transform, remix. And when we bring our why to that, our reason for using it, I think that's when we can move on from the same old and actually find something new. Find something new and a little practical tip for you here that I just want to leave with on this start with why point is don't just know what you're posting, but why you're posting. Really, this is if you're in social media on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or any of that sort of stuff. But I think it's relevant to so much more is know the why behind the what. For us, we, uh, we set up a table just simply using like Excel, Google Sheets, and there'll be three columns, three columns which are used to plan everything for our social media. And there'll be a column which says the date. So we know when we're posting it, it will say what, what it is we're actually posting. But then there is a why. Why are we actually posting this thing? Are we just posting it because we've seen it or whatever? But what is the why behind it? And really, it could be fun. It could be to point people towards our small groups that we call crews. It could be to build anticipation towards Sunday. It could be to encourage people to invite their friends to whatever is happening. But know the why behind the what it is you're posting. Second thing I want to chat about to you guys today and again, any questions, let me know on the way, but make it better. Make it better. Identify areas in which you can bring yourself and actually raise the bar. See, as I said like before, I was kind of working in different areas across the church. Um, probably worth saying that like, I'm full-time on staff and I've had different roles, whether it's based in a location or with schools and now they're more creative stuff. But what actually happened probably midway through 2020, I realized my, my roles were quieter. I was involved in one of our locations, but buildings were shut, we're all in home. I was involved in schools, schools were closed. Yes, we were still doing stuff online, but there wasn't so much going on. So I went to my boss and I was like, hey, look, I know like comms, creative TV world has ramped up. TV was a whole new world for us. Like if there's room for me to step in and help, let me know. So I stepped in, I helped, and this led to way more responsibility in the area. But it also made me realize this thing, if there's anything that, if you spot a gap, then it's probably an opportunity for you to step in. Or a lot of the time I might look at some of our comms and TV stuff and get quite frustrated, no fault of the team, but because there was so much we had to do that we couldn't bring the best possible to it. But I've realized that if there's an area that is frustrating to you, then it's probably an opportunity for you to step in, make a difference, and actually make it better. I love this quote. There's a guy called Jocko Willink. He was a Navy SEAL, and he said, the best leaders don't just take responsibility for their job. They take responsibility for everything that impacts their mission. So if you're on a team, voluntary team, staff team, if you're in the working world, whatever it is, if you're on a team, don't just take responsibility for what you have in front of you, even if it's not written on your job description. Now, take responsibility for everything that impacts your mission. If you see a gap, you step in and you fill that gap. The thing with me, I realized once I stepped into that gap that I saw, there was way more of a gap, way more of a hole than I even realized And stuff like branding strategy and structure, all these different things that I'm like, okay, now I've got, I see more that we've got to work on. See, all I saw before, before stepping in was what was the scene. But then I realized there was some work that had to be done in the unseen in order for the scene to get better. And truth be told, like we're still in that process. We're still working on things in the unseen. How can we continue to, to adjust and adapt to make things better, make things more sustainable? And a practical tip for you on this one is uh, 
focus on projects as well as people. See, what I found is there's this balance. You've got to find a balance that works for you between quality and quantity. If you're creating content, do you want loads of quantity of stuff pushing it out there to, to build engagement? Or do you want it to be quality? Sometimes you might have to pick one or the other because maybe the level of your team is not up to the quality you need or the amount of people you have on your team isn't up to the quality, the quantity that you need. So quality or quantity. Then another thing that's a way up was experience or opportunity. Yes, we want people of experience so we can actually do what we need to get done, but we also need to make sure there's room for people to get involved. We need to create space for opportunity. And then the other thing is working and serving. I found in the creative world quite a lot, there's people who actually do this like a full-time job. So where does their working stop and their serving start? And where does their serving stop and then their working start? So you've got to have that balance as well. Realize that these people, this is their profession, but they might want to step in and actually help you do this voluntary. But where does that balance all fit? And what we found is we've got a structure, which as I say, I probably took on the creative stuff midway through 2020 and we're still figuring out what what works for like a creative team structure and I guess the most recent one that we're going to aim for is and I think I might have a kind of example of it here is don't focus too much on what the top is but where it says why it's why creative key team and creative projects we want to have a key team a core team these are the these are like the, the people that are in week to week part of everything that we do from the editors to the people that lead the video team to the social media teams, the people that are in week to week. We want to have that core team of people that are going to help outwork everything we need to creatively. But then we've got like a, I guess almost a whole database of people who have been involved in projects over the last year or whatever. But sometimes they have free time, then uni hits, they have free time, then school exams hit. So they can get involved in seasons. So these people, we want to keep in contact with them, but we know that they can't be part of the core weekly team. So We've got this creative projects team. So we know that, yes, we've got these group of people. So anytime a project is coming up, we reach out to these people and say, hey, we've got this project coming up. We need some ideas for this campaign. Do you want to get involved? Yes or no. If they say no, they're still part of this community. They just can't get involved yet. If they say yes, great. For a season, they're going to be in these week to week things, helping us push this particular project forward. So there's some things we learned that was make it better. Number three is know your competition. Know your competition. Who are you competing with? For me, I don't know about you, but YouTube has become like this whole new world. We went from church and buildings to church online real quick. We started doing it from homes, recording stuff. Then we got a bit of a studio and did stuff from there. But I've never really used YouTube so much. But this last year, I've been on there like most days, either watching stuff, researching stuff, uploading stuff. Um, and I think when you get into the YouTube world, you begin to see all these new videos and Gamers who are trending, Chunks and Philly, people might have heard of, like all these people that young people and young adults are engaging with. And you can easily start to compete with them. We had a task, we had to create three TV shows, one for Fuel, in our 11 to 14s, one for Wildlife, 14 to 18, one for our young adults, 18 to 25. And with this task, it came research. It's like, cool, we're in this new territory. We need to get out, we need to research, we need to look at what, what's trending, what people are engaging with. But I also realized we could get caught in this trap and think, these youth, these young adults are engaging with this stuff. So we need to create something similar to this in order to grab their attention. But actually, I started to think about it more. And what we offer as the church is way more unique. Our message is obviously way different. Like maybe we don't need to compete with these. They're going to engage with those things, whatever. We need to find out what is it that's unique to us and focus in on that. Really, we couldn't compete with these other people. The best competition was actually just to compete with ourselves. For us, we've gone from doing church live in person now to church online, how can we just simply continue to get better and better ourselves? Yes, be inspired by others, get some ideas, but really what we do is so different. So the best thing we can do is compete with ourselves. I love when Craig goes show, he says the fastest way to kill something great is compare it with something else. This happens with us all the time. All the time, like know your wins. For you, getting one new subscribe to a YouTube channel in a week might be a massive win, so know that and celebrate it. For others, it might be a thousand new subscribers is their win, but if you know where you are, know your competition, compete with yourself, like know when to celebrate. And a practical tip for you on this is the five Ds of a project. Five Ds of a project. And this is something kind of unofficially, every new project that comes up, we kind of run through these things. Let me just show you them on here. So the five Ds, we go through dream is where we start. Then we go delegate, then we go develop, then we go deliver. Then we go debrief. 
dream. Think of every single possible thing that could happen. Dream like crazy. What could this project become? Then once you've dreamed and then once you've kind of decided this is what we want to go with, then you delegate. Okay, who can do what? Do we need to get people from the project team involved? Is our core team going to run with this? Who can actually be a part? What roles do we need to fill? Then you go develop. This is where it happens outside of the Zoom, outside the meeting room. This is where you have offlines and people specifically in different areas work together. The video editors might discuss stuff. The graphic designers might discuss other things. They develop this and then eventually it's delivered. This is what is the final product. This is what's delivered, whether it's a YouTube clip, whether it's just an Instagram post or whatever it is. This is the delivery. And then every single thing that you do, every single project, whatever it might be, debrief. We use SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, we can ch chat more about, but I've just found unofficially, this is a, a process that I kind of just, it came to my head because it was so much of what we we're going through and we've kind of ran with it and it seems to work. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, the five Ds of a project. Number four, make it better. Make it, sorry, it's not make it better. Make mistakes matter. Can't even read there. But uh, make mistakes matter, which I'm sure you've experienced some mistakes recently. But don't wait for everything to be good before giving it a go. I can fall into that perfectionist category. I want everything to be great and perfect before we actually like, execute or deliver it. But one thing that happened to us is um, those three TV shows I was talking about, one for Fuel, one for Wildlife, one for Young Adults. We launched Fuel TV probably for two, three months. It was out there on our YouTube channel. Like Great content, content loved it. But then... Just before Christmas, end of last year, I got a message from my boss saying, hey, mate, Fuel TV, everything there, we've got to take it down. I'm like, what do you mean? So I think there was another company out there who actually they already had the name Fuel TV, which meant we had to get rid of all our Fuel TV content, which was a shame for the team, all the effort, all the work they'd put into it. And kind of at the, at the time, it was just mad frustrating because you're like, we put all this work in and now it's just got to go. Our YouTube looked a bit more like this. It went from Fuel TV like that to this video is no longer available. And to me, when I think of making mistakes matter, sometimes it is just better to fail early and fail fast. For me, I wish that in week one of Fuel TV, we found out there was another Fuel TV out there and all we have to do is delete one episode rather than finding out two, three months later that every single episode has to go. The guy from Disney, again, he had this quote. He said, become comfortable with, fa become comfortable with failure, but not lack of effort. If you want innovation, you need to grant permission to fail. See, another thing I've learned is sometimes you think it goes, the process of, I guess, success goes, fail, try again, fail, try again, fail, try again, success at the end. But what I've realized more is when you have multiple projects going on, multiple responsibilities, you can be successful in one whilst failing at the other. Success and failure can actually coexist. I've had to face up to that reality because I'd love everything to be successful all the time but it's just not the case and I think with you as well you always have a preference and you got to find the balance between preference and excellence because for me someone might have created this artwork or come up with an idea for a campaign and it might be excellent but it might not be my preference so I have a choice do I say now nah, let's not go with that because it's not my preference or do I say yeah great we can run with that because I'm going to value the fact that it is still excellent Sometimes you have to sacrifice your own preference in order for someone else to actually be able to create something with excellence. And a practical tip for you here, uh, just to note on that, actually, preference and excellence, a good, a good way to look at it is you look at Xbox and PS5 are both created with excellence. My preference would be PS5. Man United and Liverpool are both excellent teams. My preference, I don't know about you, but it would be Man United. We are top of the table on this day as we speak right now. So... It's good times for Man United. I don't know how we got there, but preference and excellence. And I think a practical tip to help him with this is this is know your brand. One thing we're working on within our youth and adults community and the creative side of things is what is actually our brand? Like, could you see something and think, oh, this is this is YXY brand. So many brands that we love, you could see it and be like, I understand little little comment won't last little to retain. I don't think Liverpool will do. I don't think Liverpool will retain that title. But I also don't think it'd be Manchester United, who knows. But know your brand. You could see a Liverpool shirt and know that is Liverpool. You could see a, a Man United quote and know that's Man United. You look at their Instagram and you know this is Manchester United's brand. It's very, very clear. So I think for us, if we're able to discover what our brand is, then it helps people coming in for the first time to, it's almost a boundary within which they can create. 
these are the fonts we use, these are the colors, this is what our brand is. But within that, you run like crazy, you create like crazy, you do whatever you want because it's within the confinements of our brand. Number five, social awareness. I said I watch a lot of TV over 2020. One of the episodes I watched or series was um, The Social Dilemma on Netflix. You might have seen it and really made you aware of so many things to do with like Facebook and Instagram and how all these things work. And uh, some of the things you're hearing is if you're not paying for the product, then you are the product. And then companies are competing for your attention. And then they showed this example, like a made up story of how the like button can actually affect someone. The positive benefits of getting the like after like after like, but how one negative comment can have such a detrimental impact to the health of young people, young adults. And Johan Harry, the author of Lost Connections, if you've not read it, but real good book. And he, he says there's a huge increase in depression and anxiety among American preteen and teenage girls since 2011. And this coincides with the rise of social media. If you think about it, we're always on device to device to device. We have instant access. We watch Netflix series like back to back to back. Like it says, you want to continue watching? Usually, yeah, yeah, continue. That's what we do all the time, right? We're always on back to back to back. The average iPhone user, it says they touch their iPhone average 2,617 times. Our attention span has gone from 12 seconds to just eight seconds. Obviously, this all affects the, the content we want to create, the way in which youth and young adults engage. But I think it's also good for us to know the tools that we're using. If we're in the digital and social space, we need to have an understanding of the impact these tools actually have. And I only think, I only think things like social media, I'm all for it. I back everything about it, but I just think let's be smart. Let's use it well. Let's encourage people when they use it to not tear people down, but build people up. Use it different to maybe how we see it used. Practical tip on here could be digital minimalism. Let me explain digital minim minimalism. It's figuring out how can I maybe use social media with um, the, I want to put it in the right way, minimum input, maximum output. Minimum input, maximum output. Because what can happen is we put in maximum input. We scroll, 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 put it down. Our output from that, we feel no better. That has not helped us whatsoever. So how can we do minimum input? I can just look at a few things here and there. I'm well in control of my usage, but maximum output. To me, we're starting to think of how can we use things like social media? How can we use the digital space to maybe point people towards other things? Yes, they can get inspired from that, but it encourages you to then go and go on a walk meet a friend, call a friend, grab a coffee, go and spend time and read your Bible for yourself. So it's minimum input, but maximum output. I was reading recently about solitude and think about solitude. I didn't realize, but you can have solitude in like a coffee shop. It doesn't have to be silence, but you can sit as long as it's you and no other opinions or no other thoughts coming in. That is solitude. And I think for us, especially in the creative world, we've got to find that time where we can actually think, think away from the noise, but think in the quiet and come up with this, I think that's where we can get the best inspiration possible. Imagine trying to create and think in the noise. We can just look at, ah, oh, this is trending. I love that idea. Let's use this. But actually, if we take time in the quiet, in the quiet, and as I say, not, not quiet silence, but because that can be hard in lockdown, there's people in your house, but quiet more in solitude, quiet in your soul, quiet in yourself, spending time with you and your thoughts, you and God. Imagine what we can create. Imagine what we we'll create, just spending time listening to him. And the last one I want to share with you, there's the stats I read to you. 2617, if you remember it, number of times people touch their mobile phone per day, and eight seconds is the attention span. And last one is breast refill. There was this verse for me that really helped me so much through 2020. Like even though we're in our homes more often, I felt like I was still like tired, still worn out, still needed rest because it was less physical rest, but it was more rest for myself, rest for my soul. It says this, it says Matthew 11, 28. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I read an article last year, and it was talking about how creatives have this crushing workload. In fact, no longer do they enjoy the creative process, because if you go back to them five Ds of a project delivery, they didn't get to dream, they didn't get to delegate, they didn't get to develop, they had to just deliver, 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 deliver. No time to debrief, straight back to delivery. It's happened time and time again, there's not enough time to actually put yourself and put your thoughts and create within a project. It's just been deliver after deliver after deliver. It's been so demanding and it's caused people to have these crushing creative words. But that's what I found so much. That verse has become so relevant and real to me that I need to take, take time out, spend time with God, rest. And this rest, I love it. This rest 
It can refer to energy, creativity, vision, strength, optimism, clarity, hope, rest is life giving. And a little practical tip on it, and this one with this prayer of a project. I know with these crushing workloads, you can really just be keen to start your day and get into that work straight away. What if before we got into the project, before we got into the work, we actually take time to sit down and pray, commit that to God and actually be like, God, I've got this all on me, but actually what if I was to bring you into what, what do you want to do through me on this project? What ideas can I get inspired by only you? Prayer over projects and who knows what God will do for you? Who knows what ideas he would give so that we continue to reach, influence youth, young adults. Maybe it's not for you, youth or young adults, but continue to reach people during this time offline, not face-to-face or online, not offline. You know what I mean? But who knows what could be possible? So if you don't have any questions, I'm just going to wrap up with this. But I think it's just worth a reminder that ultimately we do this for God. I think sometimes you can get stressed out, overwhelmed by all the projects that are on your shoulders. But ultimately, I think your role may be, may be different. But wherever it is, in church, out of church, ultimately what you do, your reason that you're there, it's, you're there for God. And I think the content as well, we don't care so much about people engaging with the content. But really, how are they using this to engage with the creator? So I just want to say you're probably doing better than you think you are if you think there's struggles at the moment, but I want to encourage you to keep going, keep innovating, don't fear anything that feels new, but let's continue to step into that because I honestly believe God wants to use every single one of you in an incredible way to just continue to innovate, use new ways to reach people for him. So thanks so much for joining. If there are any questions, I will be more than happy to answer them not seen any yet which is absolutely fine um but yeah maybe if you do see this at a different time not live then feel free to get in contact with me i'm sure there's ways of doing that but other than that thank you so much for being a part of this thank you for listening i hope those things help you a little bit as i said i'm still on a journey i'm still learning i don't know everything at the moment but good to do this journey with you thanks so much take care